All right, welcome back, everybody. Going to be going over a couple other concepts, um, leftover functions. Should wrap up some of the series, but first thing we're going to hit is plot fills. So you see these a lot in uh, scripts like Ichimoku if you're trying to fill the cloud. Um, I'm trying to think of other places. A lot of indicator backgrounds use this plot fill function, right? So we're going to go over the basics of how to do it. So um, we're going to make a new script, take two EMAs of length 25 and 100, and we're going to plot both of them, okay? So if you want to test what you learned, pause the video, go knock that out, give you a sec. Okay, so what we want to do for this is we're going to make the EMA cloud. We're going to say inputs, and it's going to be short length the input of 25 highly equals short EMA long length the input of 100 highly equals long EMA and we don't care that much about that so do short EMA we'll do something like that make it readable short EMA is equal to the EMA function, right? Of close, because we don't care that much about changing things, and it's going to be the short length, right? Because the EMA function looks for EMA source length, right? So we're always just fulfilling that. Long EMA is equal to the EMA close long length, okay? Then what we're going to do is plot them like you normally would, just short EMA, just going to be just that, and plot the long EMA. And make a new script, save this, add this to chart, and we're just going to call this EMA cloud again, because it looks like I already have that saved. So it plots two EMAs, and something to note, is overlay has to be true, otherwise it'll be an oscillator, but we want this on the actual screen, right? So we're going to want to fill this. So the way you do fills um, is that it has to call two previously plotted lines, and it'll fill in between those, but those have to be plotted and called something else. So stored as variables, right? So what I like to do to keep it simple is we're going to keep the short EMA as A, Call the long one is B. Oops, actually, sorry. Should be here. A is equal to this plot. B is equal to this plot. And then we're going to want to say fill. Fill A, fill B, which is our second one. And leave the color off for now. Let me go back here. Save it. And now it's going to fill in between those two lines, right? So that's, that, that's how people do Ichimoku clouds. If you want to change your Ichimoku, it's pretty simple. And we can also, learning what we are going off of what we learned about switches, we can also get a little bit of more information about these EMAs. So let's figure out what the trend is, right? So let's say custom color is equal to, well, let's see if the, sh if the short EMA is above the longer EMA, like it is here. Well, we're generally in an uptrend. If the long one's above the short one, we're generally in a downtrend. So let's say if the short EMA is greater than or equal to the long EMA, then we're going to run a return a lime color. And if it's not, we can assume that it's in a downtrend and it will return red. So we'll say color. Let's go to custom color. Color is equal to custom color. And color is equal to custom color. And we also want to make sure these are titled, because that's good practice. Short EMA. Long EMA. And this is going to be EMA fill. Save this. Toss it over. Oops. And now, depending on the direction of the cloud, 
it's green or red. And like I said, same thing that same thing they do with Ichimoku clouds. Um, when the clouds in an uptrend because this um, the baseline. Oh, it's been a while since I looked at Ichimoku. Um, basically, if the top line's above the bottom line, so on and so forth, it'll be colored accordingly. So that's just a basic way to do fills. Um, you can do those for indicator backgrounds. You can make clouds with them. Uh, just tons and tons of options. It's more about learning the functions you need than it is actually using them. Uh, other thing that we're going to talk about, actually specifically mention the Ichimoku, is the ability to offset lines. Right. So we're going to get rid of everything but the lagging span. And you'll notice that the lagging span is not one to one to price. Right. It's generally about 30 bars back. I like to keep mine at 27 because um, that's the daily cycle for Ichimoku. And so if you want to offset something, it's very easy, very simple. Uh, we're going to make a new script. We're going to call it offset.txt. Easy to change it to Python. Let's say study title equals offset example. Okay. And we want it on the overlay this time, not as an oscillator, although you can do offsets on or off the off off the overlay. So I'm gonna say offset length is equal to input of zero title equals offset length. We'll make it variable just so it's really easy to see. And we're gonna do we're gonna just gonna do a very simple EMA. We'll just say EMA of close and of 15 because we don't care that much right plots or plot we're just going to plot the simple ema right say color is equal to red and then we're going to say offset is equal to offset length and you can do fixed variables or you can use something from the input so get rid of the ichimoku um, offsets important for stuff like hld or hlvs um, lagging spans, a whole bunch of different options. FLD, sorry, that's what I was thinking of. Very simple, very easy to add on. Um, Ichimoku has two offsets because the clouds offset usually around 30 forward and the lagging spans back about 27, 30, somewhere in there. So we'll add this to chart. And it's not offset yet, but if, if we start changing the offset length, it'll either move forward or backwards. So it's very easy to set up um, if you're looking for cycle type information. Boom, right there. Let's see, what else do we have left? I'm looking at the highest lowest function, this is probably going to be the last um, little bit we look at for this series. Um, for now, you can use this to create dynamic overbought oversold. Um, this is the basis of Donchian derivatives. So from what you've learned here, you should be able to create an Ichimoku cloud. You just have to look at uh, Tenkan functions and Kijensen functions. Um, also good for pivot points if you're interested in building something like that. But this is kind of an example of how to use a function that you're not familiar with. So highest just gives you the highest value for a given number of bars back. So if you say highest 10, it'll tell you which out of the last 10 candles, which one had the highest value or what was the highest value in the last 10? Because there's a different candle, or there's a different function that'll tell you which candle back specifically was the highest. But um, if it goes 1,000, 2,000, 500, 400, 300, then it will store 1,000 as the highest, right? And we can use that as functions of decay for stuff like Donchian channels or Ichimoku clouds. So we're going to go back to our really easy RSI script, which we called highest bars for a reason. And <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to say high tracker is equal to the highest of the test RSI. So we're looking to see what was the highest the RSI did for a given period. And where was it highest for the last 14 bars? We can do the same for low tracker. And we'll make that the lowest. Test RSI, look back length, OK? 
Eh. Plot. Tracker. Plot. Load tracker. We'll title both of these. This for good habits. Hi. Tracker. Load tracker. Okay. We'll just copy over this, add it to chart. Now you can see your RSI, it tells you where it was recently highest, and that can, you know, sometimes give you ideas of support and resistances. Um, not so much on the RSI, but on other ones. Like, there's some height there. It, it, it completely depends on what you're using it for. I just chose the RSI because it's a good function. It's easy to remember, less typing. But I think that'll bring this series to a wrap for now. I hope to make more videos in the future, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you're interested in more information, you can find us at benequants.net. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Which pull up my handle. Find right here. We also have a Discord server. You can find me at Jack D Day. Um, I don't tweet often, but I'm the community manager for Peercoin, so I'm always happy to talk about crypto or trading. Um, more than welcome to DM me on Discord if you want to talk. So. Um, thank you for spending time with me, and I look forward to hopefully speaking with you guys in the future. Take care.